Hi, my name is Alina. I'm an architect based in San Francisco. Today we are continuing our journey through Expo 2025 in Osaka. This time we will dive into some of the most striking architecture on site. From the unique designs of Middle Eastern pavilions to the USA and Switzerland contributions, including one of the most disappointing pavilions of the Expo. We will also look at Japan's ambitious experiment turning waste into energy, and how the Expo became a platform for younger Japanese architects, those under 40, to experiment with design of restrooms, galleries, and open zones for the rest of play. Let's get into it! Let's start with the Middle East, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. This region has been investing heavily in big architectural statements. After Expo 2020 in Dubai and with Expo 2030 already planned for Riyadh, the region keeps using World Expo as cultural showcases, and their pavilions are always among the most memorable. The Qatar pavilion is designed by Ken Gakuma, and the inspiration behind it was the traditional Qatar sailing boats and the Japanese techniques of wood joinery. The main space of the pavilion is basically a box and the pavilion has a secondary skin which is formed with a wooden structure and the white stretched material which is resembling the sail of the boat. The United Arab Emirates pavilion designed by Junior Shigami is a translucent glass structure held up by 90 tall columns made from agricultural waste of date palms sourced with local farmers. It feels both light and monumental, connecting tradition with experimental materials. You could find more about Saudi Arabia Pavilion in my part 1 video about Osaka Expo. Then comes one of the most ambitious pavilions, Japan. From the outside, the pavilion is made of concentric CLT walls supported by steel frames, each ring rising to a different height. The variation lets you read its circular plan from every angle. About 1,600 cubic meters of timber went into the structure, most of it borrowed from manufacturers and intended to be returned and reused after the expo. Getting in was not easy. Entry worked through a complicated lottery system or extremely long queues. We managed to visit late in the evening and it turned out to be the perfect timing. The installations glowed beautifully with light. The theme is simple but powerful. Wood waste collected at the expo is fermented by microorganisms to create methane. Inside, the story about innovation and sustainability is framed in a very artistic way. Spirulina-filled tubes with mirror walls form a glowing, forest-like installation, an algae ecosystem thriving with light and water. In the factory zone, robotic arms and 3D printers create furniture and objects made from bioplastics infused with spirulina. Silk fabrics patterned with water, ephemeral and poetic, make you think of cycles of life. USA and France pavilions meet you right at the entrance of the expo, side by side on the most prominent lots. And the USA pavilion is designed in very minimalistic style and we are entering via this plaza which is formed with these two triangular wooden structures on the side which hold these LED screens and in the center there is this translucent cube which, which is floating and under this there is this shadowed space that we are going to enter. 
From the outside, the USA Pavilion has minimalistic design and clean, simple shell. But once inside, it was one of the biggest disappointments. The exhibition focused on space, but in a way that already felt dated and uninspired, with rigid rooms and basic LED installations. France, which I showed in my part 1 video, created a contemporary and artistic installation, while the USA felt flat in comparison. Even the final rocket launch scene, which added a bit more drama, didn't feel as innovative as it could have been. The Switzerland pavilion reminds of the scientific lab, so I think we're going to explore lots of very interesting things inside uh, related to the newest innovations in the Switzerland. It's actually one of the lightest structures at the Expo. Six white spheres made from a double layer foil membrane, stretched over a minimal steel frame. And inside you step into a dark, dreamy space with inventive technologies and installations. As you probably know, in Japan the restrooms are very unique and innovative places and this expo is not an exception. They gave an opportunity to some of the young architects to design several restrooms around the site and I think all of them look very cool and each of the architects took advantage of this opportunity and really thought through of a different ways to design it. For the city and region, the expo is a major economic boost, attracting millions of visitors and driving investment. But what excites me the most is that an expo is temporary. It gives architects the freedom to be more experimental, to explore technologically advanced design and to create something unique that couldn't exist anywhere else.